And now I'm the last man standing, but <laughs> we barely made it. What's up, guys? It's Tenkosh, and it's Beginner's Guide for PV4 Sync. So yeah, the game is free to play, but it's not as easy because you need to do the right things, otherwise you will lose quite fast. So guys, you might already know that you can select different characters here, and uh, for the PV, and each of the characters have their own speciality. Like that cut, for example, is very strong with melee. When he will be upgraded, he will get melee upgrades. Glory is the one that's using a lot of sniper rifles. And Dr. Stone, I'm not sure which weapon he uses, but he is focused on the healing. I haven't tried him. Ragna, on the other hand, is good with rifles and uh, shooting enemies at range. So depending on your play style, you might want to go with a different character if you haven't played with that one yet. Same goes with your Nana Companion. It should benefit your playstyle and your character. So depending on what you lack, you might want to go for some different option here. I like Suppressor quite a lot because when it's in the hand, it uh, will reduce the uh, spread. So your aim will be better and it's doing range damage so it doesn't die that fast. Other option is Crusher and Guardian. Those guys are both good for PvE. Seer, on the other hand, I'm not really sure. It seems that Seer is mostly for PvE. For the mods, uh, I think the best option is to get the highest tier mods that give you most power. So it seems that power is really important. The higher power you get, the easier it will be for you. Moreover, over time you will get better mods. So starting with the simple mods, then the blue ones with two additional augments that you can do. And they will get more bonuses. So... Depending on how far you are into the game, you might want to change them over time. So yeah, you can also augment the things that you like, the weapon that you like, and it will give you a random attribute. They can be good, they can be bad, but that's the only way to upgrade the weapon right now. And uh, for extra weapons that you have, that you don't use, you can easily recycle extra stuff that you don't need. And that will give you upgrade materials and extra currency for the game for your upgrade so yeah you can get rid of extras moreover don't forget to get uh, pvp and pve sets those are different and uh as far as i understand you get pvp mods only in pvp i'm not sure about that i haven't got any i played several pvp matches i'm not sure because i didn't got any pvp mods so far only pv ones so probably pvp ones are dropped in the pvp matches then the weapons now for the weapons it's really important to upgrade your weapons because that will adjust their performance for the starting weapon i advise you guys to get something special that you won't get in the normal run and over time as you play you will unlock more and more of those things i wouldn't focus too much on the pistol and melee weapons because those well they are good if you use melee weapons often you might want to go for something heavy probably that might be good for you you can go to this guy ellie oh, and he can help you customize your weapons and some customizations will be really good so this will reduce the flash and vertical recoil so that will make this weapon better and yeah i think it's a good idea to upgrade other weapons as well if you will collect them in your run specifically if you like them so you can customize those and give them additional bonuses you can get a new sight new muzzle that kind of stuff get what you can that will help you out now let's move on to the gameplay we're talking about pve today and um if you're early to the game like me i don't know i'm early or not in most areas you want to hurry up so before going into the runs if you are late game you would like to go um here to leah go to database go to companion modes and learn mods of your goddamn companion so next time when you will be able to upgrade them you won't have to read through them too much and you would know what to go for that will save up so much time that might be really valuable for you in the run so yeah read through those a bit just learn them a bit so you will be okay when you'll be doing the run and won't spend like 20 minutes reading through that otherwise you might die when you are just starting your run first things first you gotta hurry up and get upgrades for your armor and get yourself your nano companion otherwise you will die pretty fast it's really easy to lose here without your companion try to find the chests get something out of them oh we got not oh we got the armor that's nice and just follow towards your goal as fast as possible because over time the surge difficulty it's on the right right now it will increase and when it will be really high well then you're in trouble because that will allow you well to die pretty fast sometimes the enemy might be a bit too hard for you or there will be too many powerful enemies 
So be careful. Don't forget to dodge the projectiles. And do your best to decimate the enemies before they do it to you. Oh, wow. Well. So yeah, killing the Ninos will give you the uh, resources that you use to upgrade yourself. So it's a good idea to take out as many as you can. But don't spend too much time on that. When you see ammunition crate... You should go and recharge always. Now let's talk about the store and upgrades. What do you want to upgrade? Depending on the mission, if you are in, this, in the open and you can get new weapon, you should try to get blue or purple weapon and then upgrade it. Also, before upgrading the armor, I would advise to get at least blue armor that I have over here so you won't spend too much money. And uh, it's really essential to upgrade your armor and weapon, otherwise you will be overwhelmed pretty fast. So yeah, your first amount of money should go towards your ammo upgrades, not towards your companion upgrade. Depending on your skills and capabilities in combat, it might be a good idea to kite enemies, not to rush into the enemy group and hide somewhere, attack them from the distance, you know, uh, try to break line of sight from the enemies so they won't all attack you from range. And that will allow you to save up your health and take them out before, well, they will take you out. Moreover, that skill that I just used for this jump, it's very useful for evasion and changing the combat area and positioning it in fight. Use it wisely. I think top priority for your run is upgrading your armor and only then going for the weapon. When you get all your weapon and armor that you have upgraded, then you can spend the rest of the resources for the mod selection for your companion. And yeah, always try to shoot the weak points of enemies, those glowing orange things that will do additional damage to them and you won't waste too much ammo on the fight that will also stun them interrupt them depending on what kind of skills do you have so it's always a good idea to go for the weak points and keep moving obviously yeah <laughs> keep in mind when you get in the mode that your nano can hold only three of those being active you can always press tab and see which of those are active over there and like this is for the different nano at all oh my god so yeah, only three of your mods will be active for your parent nano, so yeah, be smart about that. And yes, the longer you wait, the more it will take, the surge will increase, and uh, if it will go to 100, you will get constant damage to yourself, and most likely that won't end well for you. And yeah, keep in mind that some weapons are better for close combat, some weapons are better for ranged combat, and use them properly. Holy shit, I almost died here. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, even if you die at some mission, at the late mission, it's okay because it might be hard. The good thing that even after the defeat, you get the mods back that you can equip to make yourself stronger. Moreover, if you fail some missions, you can go together with other players and that will still be completed. Usually it's easier in co-op than in solo mode. By the way, right now there is an issue with the game, it's bugged, so some servers, EU servers right now, they don't work. So if you want to play co-op, you got to switch to different server and then press team play and that will find you a team. Otherwise, you won't be able to play. So yeah, together with other players, it's usually easier to go through the mission. So yeah, guys, as you can see, playing together with the team is easier. Because those guys, they will back you up. And if you die, if you fail, they can resurrect you. So yeah, you won't have to fight one versus one and now i'm the last man standing but <laughs> we barely made it so yeah the level that i barely managed to beat myself actually was killed here was really easily taken by the team and as you progress deeper you will get stronger mods that will allow your solo performance to be better and yeah over time you will get the gun tech technology and here you can customize your guns quite a lot and yeah that's actually good in order to upgrade it, you will first need the weapon parts and the specific type of weapon parts. So the outer rim can be upgraded with those orange things that are more common. And the actual inner ring bonuses, which are more powerful, are being upgraded with these weapon parts. Okay, that's more like it. If you have too many med kits and there is some land lying around and you are injured, you can use that to heal up and pick up another one. Easy, but some people just miss this. So yeah, guys, those are all beginner tips I can give you for Sync for PV. Let me know if you get extra tips down below in the comments. And don't forget to sub to the channel that will help to promote the video in YouTube algorithm. And I'll be glad to see you guys and subscribers. Other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. That's about it for now. Stand Kosh out. Have a good one. Bye.